Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bossers Podcast, a great place to play games and be better. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deergan. Alongside me, as always, is the PC Muscle Race himself, Laron Dawkins. What's poppin'? Also joining me is the mad pharmacist herself, Stephanie Klimov. Hello. Accompanied by Paxel. She's giving me a hug. She's sorry about your water. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> Why hunt monster when you have me? <laughs> so that voice you hear is none other than the man, the myth, the legend himself, Matthew Keel. Hello. How you doing? Great. Just couldn't get enough of us, so he's back. I yeah. know. Just just couldn't stay away. No, we really just brought him on because uh, Leron needs somebody to talk Monster Hunter with. And Hell yeah. So. Hell yeah. There, there we go. There we are. Good. We got we to gotta get our newest protege, Stephanie, into the mix. Got to get up to speed. Yep. Yeah. You know, like, we can't say you're going to match the hours that we put into this game, but we can you, you can probably match us in wits on it. Oh, for sure. Prob- oh, for sure. Probably true. Probably true. How's everyone's week going? It's it's going. It's it's a week. <laughs> it It yeah. is a week. Steph- same shit, different week. Yeah, the week that is. Mm. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm mentally run down. I'll, I'll just put it that way. Yeah, I hear you. It's uh, you know, life, work, this, it all gets to you. You know, sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, for but, sure. True. But True that. It is Wednesday night, though. It is the best night of the week. Mm-hmm. The best night, they say. So, uh, so Corey, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, cause I saw, I saw something you put on Twitter and, um, I, I need, I need, I need follow up for this. So you said, you said you sh- will start looking for a PlayStation five because there are games you want to play. Mm-hmm. And I remember last week on the show, you actually said there's nothing you're, there's nothing you wanted to play. So you're not interested in getting a PlayStation five anytime soon. I so, know, but I finally watched the God of War trailer and then. I started talking to somebody with Hori- about Horizon the other day, and I got kind of excited. But then PlayStation wouldn't let me buy one. So, and that Horizon Forbidden West Collector's Edition had a massive discount. I know, but I'm not. I'm not looking to add more plastic garbage to my office. Oh come on! It's, it's a me- it's a Mecha Mastodon. Come yeah, on! I don't need that. Yeah, I already, I already a, have the blah, Aloy. Blah, blah, blah. I already have the Aloy from the first game. So I don't I don't need the robot dinosaur. I already have I have the main event. I don't need the mastectomy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the mastectodon. So <laughs> so so hold on. Hold on because like you've had you've had for 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 weeks if oh, well, you've had for over a year. I like, might have to go back to Horizon Forbidden West now. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the story takes a uh uh wild twist I hear, Matt. I don't I don't Apparently. <laughs> Stephanie spoiled the game first. <laughs> That's really what the game is about, actually, just giving robot Spoilers. dinosaurs vasectomies. <laughs> yeah, you gotta control the population. The sexual health of robot dinosaurs. Yeah. Anyways, what were you saying, Leron? Well, no, um, I was actually gonna chastise you for 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 a moment longer, but um, no, nah, it's 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 good that you um, it's good that you're actually like you know you finally got got energized for it. Yeah, I mean. The thing is, is PlayStation won't let me buy one, so I guess they don't want me to own one, which is fine. Well, well will they not is. let you, or are they, or are they sold out? Like, no, the pro- I, no. The problem is, the no. Problem is See, they he, they only let you buy one through your PlayStation account for PlayStation Direct, and uh, I already bought one for somebody else. So now I cannot so they, buy one through PlayStation Direct. Well, Corey, I mean, I didn't buy mine through PlayStation Direct. Do you want me to just get it through mine, or just let me know later if that's what you want to do? I don't know. I feel uh, I feel weird making let telling people to do things for me. So Oh, uh, you're not telling me. I what the hell? Really? You just offered. <laughs> what? Thank you. I have you... this. It's not like I'm saying I'm giving it to you for free. You Your honor, for free. I submit exhibit A, <laughs> Stephanie Klimov's offer to bu- to get <laughs> All right, Corey, to 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 quote to quote a meme on the internet right now, do you want the fucking cake or do you not want the fucking cake? I don't know. I'm trying to lose weight, Laron. Cake is not good for that. The cake being the PlayStation Five. Like I feel, 
Because <laughs> <laughs> I already, I already helped Austin get a PlayStation on with my PlayStation account, so I can't, I can't use the direct either. Or I would have already said, "Hey, I will get on the next direct for you." I know. Uh, also, like, I want a discless one. Uh, what? I don't want. Why do you want a discless? Are you sure, want, sure about that? Yeah, I am. I don't want. I don't. I don't want any of this plastic garbage laying around here. Well, I will say this: when everyone was talking all at once, instead of discless, I heard dickless. Yeah, dickless. Yeah. Oh, that's the canonical name for it. Yeah. That's exactly what it mm-hmm. is. Oh, yeah. okay. Which yeah. reminds me of a potential topic for later, so I'm gonna write that down before I forget. <laughs> for what? This show or After Dark? <laughs> oh, well, I guess we've got the Vesectodons. We've got the dickless PS5. Man. Stephanie, is there something? Should we have Give done After robot Dark dinosaurs first? Dinosaurs access to abortion. Just saying. Yeah, I have oh. a one-track mind. Oh no. Uh, yeah. So yeah, no, I'm. I am thinking about getting one. It's just so big, it's just so. That's what she said. Just teeing us up on this one, Corey. What are you doing? It's just a lot. It just takes up a lot of space. It does. Hey, uh, hey, Corey. By the way, thank you for the um. Thank you for the template for the uh for the uh for the square thumbnails. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what I do. Yeah, because I. I already because I I put it to use for this new episode. Good, it's they're fun, they're cool. I I started doing that. I started messing around with it for with Tower Casuals, and I'm like, oh, I really like this. Maybe we should do this for the rest of the things that I do. And then I started working on them, and I didn't finish them. And I'm glad you reminded me because I. Oh, well, I it was uh, I it, it like let. To to be fair, like I just ask you, I just asked you, hey, would would you mind making one of those for me? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's a it reminder. Wasn't like, it wasn't like I it wasn't like I was trying to task you to, to do something. You were. You're terrible. Mm-hmm. I know. I'm I'm such an asshole. Loran, I hate when you make me do things for you. Just oh, you do. No, I'm just you kidding. do. You do. Because damn, like I guess I need to delete all these. I, I guess I need to delete all these messages that I've sent you over the. Over the past six months. Yeah. Well, you're an Android user. I'll get them in like three weeks. <laughs> if you send them now, I'll get them in like three weeks. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah. No, I don't know. Androids, am I right? Hmm. Anyways, uh, we're here to talk about video games and other things. But first of all, we're going to get to our Patreon producers. Uh, I want to thank everybody who supports us over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. You can support us directly. Uh, if you don't know, Patreon is a monthly subscription service where you can support your favorite creators directly. Uh, we offer two tiers. Uh, $1 a month grants you early access to five shows. Uh, Boss Rush Podcast, Power Block Expansion Pass, Talk the Walk, Standard Def, and After Dark. But... If you want to be a Patreon producer, you can subscribe at the $5 tier and become one of those. And what does that mean? It means your name gets shouted out on this here segment of this here program. Wow, I just totally butchered that. It's all right. It's been a long day. Pushing through. So without further ado, our Patreon producers for this episode of the Boss Rush Podcast are Adriel Munger, Celeste Roberts, my wife, Son and Dierig. My wife. That Can't one. resist. That's fine. Uh, Francisco Santillan, Rebecca Jewell, and Prince Unsmooth Toes. I want to thank all of our Patreon producers. I want to thank all of our patrons, and I want to thank all of our free listeners. Remember, all of our content remains free. If you support us, you just get a few perks. Uh, by the way, if you listen on free feeds, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, please leave us a five-star rating and a nice review really helps us out. If you watch on YouTube, subscribe, like, share with your friends, hit the bell. Laurent's watching probably some sort of weird TikTok video that he keeps sending us. <laughs> so. Why are you going to do me like that? <laughs> Is that what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you're almost, you're almost right. <laughs> oh. Sorry, okay. Laurent's right, purchasing right, coins right, for right, his right. OnlyFans account. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, he's, so. he's watching old Vine videos through the web archive. Yeah, I was uh, <laughs> archive.org. I was trying to <laughs> e bombs world. To... Yeah, 
Was I was trying to put Newgrounds, a tweet. one of the old ones. Grounds? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a video game site, I think, predominantly, wasn't it? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Been forever. Dude. Yeah, same. Yeah, I was trying to put. I was trying to put a tweet out to let everyone know that the um that the latest episode of Crossroads is now the finalized version of Crossroads is, is available for uh for this week. And uh, and I was reading this tweet where uh, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give the at or anything. Uh, but uh, but in this tweet, the person said, "When I first came out as gay, my stepfather told me he got out of jail, and used to frequent gay bars to rob men for money. Uh, he said he stopped because one guy offered him a drink, and and that quote it didn't feel right. He later found out that this guy was Jeffrey Dahmer. And hmm. so like the, and so like the comment train just 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 kind of goes right. Uh, one person asked, "If you don't mind me asking, is your stepdad gay, or was he simply there to rob men?" Uh, to his response was just to rob men, but him and my mom aren't together anymore. And she always, she always said that she thought he was a little fruity. <laughs> and then, and then, and then the comments just rolled from there. Uh, I had the, I had the one meme of uh, Kiki Palmer on uh, on Hot Ones, and when she, when she, when she had one the uh, one the Buffalo Wings, and she's like, mm, "This was a little sweet." <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's that uh, is a journey. Yeah. Just wow. wow. That's all I got. Wow. That's Yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean the inter- I'm sorry, the internet is a gift that keeps on giving. Is is or it Or a curse that keeps on cursing? Oh, yeah, no, no, I, no, Unless... no, it, 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 no, it is because like learning that people are are, are, are marinating their chicken with NyQuil. Come on. Come on. Dude, yeah, I saw a news article on that. How stupid are people? Oh, um my gosh. is it worse or better than Swallowing tie po- Tide Pods. I feel like it's almost the same. <laughs> I feel like it's almost but the same. He, see, I feel like it's a little, not by much, not not by much, by maybe like you know. Well, maybe because Nyquil because, is also designed to be ingested. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah, like they're yeah. both designed to be, you know, swallowed. You know, so okay. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't understand, but like, but, but like I said, but, <laughs> I just like, like look I said on yesterday. Stephanie's face. She's like, "What now?" <laughs> yeah, but, but like I said yesterday, like just uh, let them die. Thank yeah. you, Laurent. You took the words right out of my mouth. Just I'm like, you know what? Like, if they die, good. You know, Darwin. You know, it's Darwin. just like it's just like how I said with freaking the pandemic and everything. You know what? This is. This is the this is the law of natural selection doing its fucking thing. Let it go. You know, and you know, like I like like like. I know for sure that you know, like COVID's not a nice way to go and stuff like that. But you know, sure it is. You know, you know, but, no, it's not. But like they say on the, <laughs> no, but like it's, it's, not, not. it's not. But like they say on the internet, play stupid games, win stupid fucking prizes. You know, I'm I'm tired of this shit. You know, it's like every time I look, every week I look, there's some other shit that someone's doing that's fucking murdering people, and it's like, when are we gonna learn? <laughs> I'm like, you know, so you know, between between global warming. Internet stupidity and stuff like that. You know, we're we're gonna save our planet because like all the stupid people are gonna fucking die, and the people who are left are gonna realize, hey, this is our chance to clean the goddamn planet up. We have all these dead people are gonna fertilize the ground and make us new trees. You know, <laughs> global warming is gonna global warming is gonna fix our our environment, whether we like it or not. <laughs> I I was I was listening to a thing the other day where it says it's amazing how fast. If if humans just disappeared, like how fast the Earth would just take back over? The Earth would take mm-hmm. back over. It would be it, it would be like we weren't even here. Yeah. Yeah. So. You ever watch that show I, on Discovery called Life After Humans? And how no. it's it's just like this this like theoretical documentary on how the world would just take over and it like how plants and and wildlife would just take over like cities and and like human made structures but how like life would just live in these structures and stuff now it's mm-hmm. so cool mm-hmm. it's really cool i i assume it will yeah. be available on discovery plus then yes i will check it out there's a similar one on national geographic also it's not as good <clears throat> but that would be on disney plus also i'm waiting for i'm waiting for discovery plus to merge in the hbo max are you? Because I... it seems like they're not going to have any content for you. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it seems like they're doing everything they can to get rid of a lot of HBO Max's stuff, which is. It, it seems like a lot of these uh, content sites are trying to get rid of things and people and 
things. First, you know. Well, even funnier is all of the all of the things that were put in place to prevent like that type of system from being a monopoly Mm -hmm. was uh take it was you know i guess overruled by the supreme court in 2020 and now because and now all the streaming services are basically turning into the old hollywood studio system where they're trying to just there it's a mad dash for for monopolization because now it's allowed Mm. Um, that's, not, that's the easy way to say it. And it's probably not the full, the fully correct way to say it, but like, yeah, no, this, there are people in power that do not have any of our best interests. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, in their minds and yeah. But you know, yeah. the dumb, the, but the dumb shit about it is, is like, like the people who can make the fucking change don't fucking care, you know, or don't, or don't, or don't have what it takes to figure out like, Hey. Like we know this person is bullshit, but yeah. we can easily do something to get them out of this bullshit ass position and get and get moving. And, you know, for whatever it is, you know, I, I swear the American education system is like the fucking worst. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And our in and in, in the government is is doing everything it can to keep it there. Oh, yeah. For real. Yeah. Because uh, a healthy capitalism does not have educated citizens. Well, thing, Unfortunately. But you know, but you know, that's the crazy thing about it, though. You know, like capitalism can still exist with with highly educated people. But the thing is, though, the people who run the people who run under capitalism need to realize that you can have capitalism, but you can't have capitalism the way you do it. There's both are both are not mutually exclusive. You know, like they can they can they can exist in the same place. You know, in the same space. But the problem is that all these capitalist motherfuckers are corrupt as fuck. Or well, they... I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I, I I wouldn't say they're corrupt as fuck. I'm not trying to apologize or defend them in any way. What I am trying to say is, like the scenario you're talking about, where capitalism and and uh, an educated population can exist, requires requires certain checks and balances. De- and, definitely, definitely. Before and, we run away on the political train, I mean, <laughs> the same thing goes with any other type of economic system. Oh, sure, because sure, Coming yeah. from, like, where my, my mom has grown up um, with the whole China and communism and mm-hmm. looking at Russian history of communism, the Marxism, like, if you actually read Marxist idea, it's actually brilliant. But sure, yeah. Look at the morons that run an actual communist country. They turn a great ideal into what is horrible. So, like, if mm-hmm. you look at anything from socialism, capitalism, uh, communism, they all have certain – there's just different ways to skin a cat. I hate that sure. phrase. But they're all run by dickheads. Yeah. Right. It's, it. Yeah. yeah. It's because of, because eventually the, 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 the human – the human – or the well, the human um, instinct when you're in power is to stay in power. Is to stay in power. So they would rather just do what they can to keep themselves there. That's why, you know, that's why our fucking Supreme Court right now is a fucking shit show. Anyway. Video yeah. games. Video games. Yeah, please, get, please, please get me How into something. How do we get on this? I don't, I don't know. know. It's yeah, Matt's here. Know. Laurent's here. It's just. We don't birds, of, birds of a feather. You know, one day one of our podcasts is going to stay on topic. One day. Uh, just, just one time for ten minutes. By the way, speaking of off topic stuff, let me know how that goes. <laughs> speaking of speaking of off topic, Matt, did you see that Ted Lasso is coming to FIFA? Yeah. Guess what? That doesn't make me want to do. It doesn't make me want to buy FIFA. <laughs> kind of made me want to buy FIFA. I like Ted Lasso. See, like, now is it is it the team or is it actually the, it's the team? It, it's the team. Yeah, it's so team. it's just the team. Yeah. Well, it, it's him too, but. So, you, so you get to play as that team, and you'll see him on the sidelines. Yeah, I, well, I mean, all, all right, the coaches, I'm, I think, on the sidelines. But yeah, yeah, like I, I, that's I, cool. I swear, FIFA's FIFA's doing what it can to be relevant, including changing its name next year. Uh, wait, it's changing its name. Yeah, you I didn't, think you didn't hear about think, that whole kerfuffle. I did not. They're I uh, the EA. I think all the EA stuff that's that's mm-hmm. except for Madden. I mean, no, Madden's, Madden's not going to have the Madden name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Did they? What, oh, were they renegotiate the contract? They, I thought they, sure it was. They're 
They own they they can use a Madden name through like 2035, I think. Hmm. Okay. Something like that. But college football is not partnering with the NCAA. Uh, golf is not partnering with PGA Tour. Like they're just doing it on their own. Uh, and next year, FIFA will not be called FIFA. I think it's called EA Football Club. Next year. So EA. I, I see. Well, now will they say Football Club or will it just be EAFC? Uh, I don't know. They, they said feeling... they said the official name. They said the official name is called EA Football Club. Okay, so speaking of Americans getting all up their own asses, I can see plenty of them buying that and going, wait a minute, this is a football. Well, if you put a big old soccer player on the front of it, maybe they won't buy it. Just saying. I mean, I know a lot of Americans are stupid, but look at the ball on the right? front. Is it brown and not round? Then. <laughs> Just... Call me crazy. Oh, my God. Bravo, Derek. Bravo. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Ted Lasso, though. That's a show. I like that show. I haven't watched it. It makes me feel better about everything. I need to continue watching it. I thought, thought, you know, everybody said it was, like, amazing. And I thought I wasn't going to watch it because... I'm one of those assholes who says, oh, everybody thinks it's amazing. I'm not watching it. And then I was like, you know what? I have a free trial of uh, Apple TV Plus for three months. I'm going to watch it. And I watched both seasons within like two weeks. It's nice. like it's one of my favorite shows on TV. Yeah, we uh, we used a, we used a week trial of what is it? Apple TV. Mm-hmm. And uh, I ended up watching the Velvet Underground documentary and nothing else. I don't even know what that so, is. I mean, swing and a miss. I mean, I don't. I haven't watched anything else. I tried to watch uh, Myth, Mythic Quest, which is that Ubisoft show about the game developer. That, that dude from Always Sunny or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not. It's fine. It's not great. Yeah. Uh, I watched like five, six episodes, I think, and I was like, maybe I'll continue watching this. And I'm like, maybe not. It's all right. Right now, I'm watching Agents of Shield. Oh, what episode are you on? For Laron. What episode are you on? Uh, like three or four episode. Three or four, one of those. Okay. It's the one where they're on the on the plane. The episode where they're on the plane in the first season. I could look it up, but I'm not going to. Well, what happened in the previous episode? I don't remember. Then how the hell are you watching it? I watched it like last week, and then I watched it in another episode this week. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're going to be one of those guys. It's going to take you forever to watch the show. No, see, my plan was to watch it while I was working on stuff, and then I started doing that and realized I couldn't pay attention. So, like, I have... Mm-hmm. The thing I want to do is start... I need to, like, really just start taking notes, especially on, like, seasons of shows. Because I'm not going to remember 24 episodes of a season, you know. So, but I am watching it, Laron. I'm doing it for you. Don't guess say it I means never... like I guess it means like I gotta get back into watching it. Yeah. Don't say I never did anything for you. I kind of feel like you didn't, though. Uh, maybe I did. What? Uh, who else would I have like done it for? It, Why would I just randomly start watching this show that nobody well, cares about? Let's, except let's, for you? let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. You you denied it for so long that I stopped asking you. That's not. I, I stopped talking to you about it. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, yeah, that's very fair. Anyways, uh, Stephanie, what are you doing with your life? What am I doing with my life other than just slowly marching to my inevitable death? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, move it on. Uh, same. Same. <laughs> same. Um I'm spending money. Um I got this finally from Super Rare Games. I got a physical of Aerial Knights Never Yield. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what a cool ass game. That game rules. Oh. I I never heard of it. Uh, a short hike collector's edition. Ooh, I'm oh, wow. jealous of that. I love a short hike. So spending money because I don't have enough time to play games <clears throat> have been um, slowly playing more and more of Monster Hunter, just knocking out some um, simple 
Hell yeah. You know, single player stuff and then taking down a couple of larger monsters um, with my boyfriend. So, um, and I've been playing Death's Door and I haven't had a chance to get get back to that because I'm either working with my kid, podcasting, or playing Monster Hunter. So I haven't had any chance to literally play anything else right now. So. Well, clean living, Stephanie. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, we should we should play more games. Like, just oh, in general. Side note, I'm slowly putting together my gaming space. So I have here, but I've also, like, that's all my Pokemon stuff, but I put in all the shelves together. I have, like, my TV and all my games down there, and my PlayStation is somewhere over there as well. So my gaming room is slowly coming together. Nice. This has been this way for two years, and I'm going to have to move it out before the end of this year for reasons that I'm not oh, going to go into. So maybe I'll womp, be able womp. to get it more organized. Is, that a, <laughs> is, is, is it a good thing or is something going? Is, uh, you know, you said, you're, you said you didn't want to get into it, so I, I, I'm fine. not going to No, I'm not nothing push. bad. Nothing bad. Okay, okay, okay. That's all I want to be sure of. You're the best around. But, um, There's a tangent. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to go next? Because, yeah, I'm pretty lame until I start having time to play more games. Um, uh, Matt, you're our esteemed guest. Esteemed? Um, so I was away last week. Uh, my wife and I were in the Poconos at her family's mountain house and, uh, brought the PlayStation, brought the Switch, and we played a lot together. Uh, we started and finished the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game in co-op, which is really fun. Um... Probably going to be uh, in consideration for my top ten list at the end of the year. I really like that game a lot. Um, I also played a lot more of The Cult of Lamb, yes. which is which is I, become which is becoming more hilarious and more dark and more difficult as it goes on in a way that I did not expect it to be. Um, so I played this developer's last game with my partner. Uh, it's called Adventure Pals. It's a very wacky, zany, oh uh, platformer where you are a kid who is given a giraffe for his birthday and the giraffe fits in your backpack and it can use its tongue as a propeller to help you jump. Uh, it's very silly and the villain in it is, uh, a sentient, well, a sentient. Uh, it's a goldfish that has taken control of a man who wants to turn old people into hot dogs. So, <laughs> so that's what I, I did not expect what cult of lamb is giving me. And, uh, it is a, it is a, it is a wonderful game. Um, I do like that you can basically rename all of your cult members so I started naming them after people I, I know. And it was really funny. Um, former co-host of Corey's and mine, uh, Moose, uh, his character in the game was asked by, or actually my wife's character in the game asked me, the cult leader, to make him eat poop. Hmm. Yeah, I've, yeah I've, I've heard about it. Because I nut story. Um, uh, Brody was raving about this game we had it on crossroads a couple of weeks ago and uh and yeah like this game this game looks like nothing but antics and i think i'm gonna have to add to my library it is it is it is dope in a lot of good ways um i think the visuals are great i think the i think the lamb itself is a v very cute um i do like that i do like the sloppy precision of the combat uh it never gets to in its own way with difficult mechanics um and i think the tendency for a lot of run-based games like roguelikes, roguelites, uh, they, they tend to throw way more mechanics at a player. And if a player is not ready for that, it can be daunting and cause analysis paralysis and just create a, a, ver a, create a severe gap in knowledge where it's like, I don't even know what I'm doing and I'm not making any progress. And I feel like I'm just being shown uh, what I don't know rather than being taught a new thing. Um uh, I also uh, I have I have been playing a lot of Monster Hunter. 
I've uh, gotten to I'm, I'm working towards uh, getting the final section of anomaly quests unlocked. I think you have to be anomaly rank 81 to do that. And I'm at like 75 Yeah. Uh, now with, uh, with the new title update, you know, that's going to ramp up more and with new monsters. And I do, I do like that. Uh, I've kind of settled back into my old ways of being an insect glaive main, uh, for a long time in, Sunbreak, I was using the bow, uh, which will probably end up being my second weapon from here on out. Uh, I got I was wanna, I got into a position where I was like, okay, I'm basically killing everything I can with the bow. It's time to learn something new. I re-picked up the insect glaive because nothing else was really sort of tickling me. And, uh, and it's even more uh, stay in the air than it was in World, and I love it. So I have, uh, I have like an arsenal of insect glaives that i take with me anywhere i go and i love it uh, i also dipped back into just a bunch of uh little games on switch uh i picked up one step from eden which it's a roguelike but it has like slay this it has like a slay the spire like map where you pick which direction you want to go and uh, i'm still trying to work my way through understanding the combat I mean, it's very intriguing and fascinating. Uh, I'm just, I, I just need to learn more because I've only played it for a few hours. Uh, a buddy of mine hipped me to this puzzle game on Switch. It's also on Steam. It's called uh, Mixolumia, which it kind of, it kind of, for some reason, Dr. Mario and Luminous pop into my head thinking about this game. I think it's a little simpler, a little easier to, to wrap your head around than both of those. And it's twice as addictive as they are combined. And uh, it's it's a really fun experience. So I, I would I would recommend looking at that either on Steam or on Switch. Uh, and of course, I don't think I could probably get through this without talking about how awesome Splatoon 3 is. Uh, Splatoon 3 is... I think in terms of the multiplayer alone, it's my favorite in the series so far. And I think it's, I think that's because um, winning isn't necessarily the only thing. Like you can, you can, you can, you can gain levels even if you're as garbage as I am at Splatoon three. I'm still trying to work through the single player. The single player this time out has been the hardest to get into um but i've been told by several people that you know keep at it it gets it gets way better as you go um but yeah splatoon 3 is dope there's something about a a bright and colorful shooter that's not so much about killing uh and painting and it's more about you know covering the area with paint and and that's fun i think nice i'm i'm glad that you said that because i've got my son that for his birthday in two weeks so oh nice nice yeah uh you uh pick that up you'll enjoy it Yay. yeah it's really fun i think the weapon variety this time out is 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 way better like not everything is just a variant on the super soaker or or the paint roller there's a lot of i think there's a lot of creative weapons this time out cool <clears throat> now i do feel like there's things i'm missing but i don't remember what they are so laron or Corey, what have you been playing we'll talk to laron first what are you playing laron okay um well of course i'm playing monster hunter of course. Uh, no big surprise there uh but, what um, but but after but last the all the stuff i went through last week i just i just needed like a I needed something different from what from what was going on from what I was normally playing and stuff like that. And um, I wound up I wound up picking up randomly after listening to Corey talk about it. Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening, the re the remake. Yay! And nice. I said this I said this last night I said this last night on Crossroads. And I'm going to say it here as well. Like, there's just something this playing Legend of Zelda game is like a magical fucking experience mm -hmm. it really is like i mean mm -hmm. i mean like it 
it, this is one of the few games that you know, like I, you act that it actually transports you in your brain to a different place. Like you know, it's like you, have, it's almost like you're having an out of body experience. And the fact that Link's Awakening is just so fucking cute and wholesome, it's like, oh my god, like. Like I was like, why didn't I never finish this game? Because you know, like I, I I played it strong when it first came out, but I but I but somewhere around the third dungeon, you know, I just kind of like lost steam playing it and stuff like that. So I picked it back up, and I was like, oh, I'm in the middle of the third dungeon, and I'm like, oh god, I can't remember how the controls go. So I I started over playing again, and then and, and within a matter of like hours, I got back to where I was at, and I was like, okay, like, and it's just so. It just, like I said, just transports you to like this this magical place, you know. It's like wow, like, like, uh, like Corey's Corey's watching um freaking Agents of Shield right now, and like and like I feel like playing this Legend of Zelda game is like my version of Tahiti. <laughs> I, I feel like that, you know, because because man, you know, it's, it's just something about the game, like the cute factors there, you know, but it's very serious. It's dark in certain places and things like that, and it's like wow, like you know. I really wish they would. I really wish they would go ahead and, and remaster the the Oracles games. Yeah, the or the Oracles and Ages games. Because I mean, man. I mean, I would take every two D Zelda game in some way, shape, or form like this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I think I'm gonna have to sit down and take some serious time to beat it, um, because I mean, it's it's my distraction, and I, I feel like I feel like it's been a welcome distraction because like. Last week was a very turbulent week, and then and then this week, like Monday morning, I wake up. Um, I wake up and there was like something going on with my back. There was like one area of my back that was just like it was. It felt like I just slept the wrong way or something. Mm-hmm. But then, but then later on in the day, because uh, it's fall time and seasonal allergies, I I get hit by seasonal allergies in spring and in, in spring and fall, and I had a sneezing fit, and it and it basically went full blown to like now my back is killing me. Because, yeah, because I'm officially that age now where sneezing will throw you back out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I've done that. Yeah. So um, so yeah, so I mean, so, so yeah, like just being able to like lay down on the bed and veg out playing like Legend of Zelda. Oh, and I, oh, and I actually picked up Fire Emblem. I don't know. I guess I guess last week's bad news with the Switch made me really appreciate my Switch. <laughs> The Nintendo Direct didn't do anything for me. Like you guys, you guys know that. Everybody that listened to me last week also know that. But you know, for some strange reason, like the Switch is, the Switch has now gotten more more playtime than my PC and my PlayStation for this past week. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. Look so at there's you. That. There's 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 that. I don't know. Like you know, like a. Pretty soon you're gonna be trading in Crossroads for Power Block. <laughs> no. No oh, because shoot. no because here's because here's the thing about that. Here's the thing about that, like, like you know, like I, I'm always gonna hold, hold Ed in resentment because Ed was like, because Ed was like when it was confirmed that that uh, that direct was happening, Ed was like, Laron, this is this is your direct. He said that. <laughs> to, he said directly to me. Well, that's when you know should have known it wasn't gonna, so, just wasn't gonna happen. So you, so you between you and Ed telling me to lie about these Legend of Zelda like like games coming to the Switch and Look. and getting a date for Advance Wars and all this stuff, you know prominent people in the gaming industry that people trust said these games are coming okay believe half of what you see and none of what you hear the only yeah. person that was 100 percent right was emily rogers because she said fire emblem was going to be shown who's that <laughs> like she's been a nintendo leaker for a long time she said she's heard that the zelda games were done but she didn't think that they were going to be announced I went back through her tweets and her. Are you talking about like the Twilight Princess? <laughs> Corey was looking for the receipts. <laughs> I, yeah, I was. Corey was like, looking for the receipts. Yeah, and I, I've gotten, I've gotten out of the habit of getting excited when leaks like that happen. It's too hard. I try. Okay. You know, it's, you know I mean, it took me a long time, but like then when, but see, because I'm out of that habit. If I'm talking with people about being excited for the things that were leaked, even though they do show, like, yeah, but we knew about that. We knew about that. Like, and then you, when you ask where you knew about that, well, this person said it. Like, did they have proof or did they just did they just say it? Well, they said it. So, and they they have a good track record. I'm like, that doesn't mean anything. And, and well, the, Jeff Grubb was know, on like four Giant Bomb shows saying it though. No, you, I know. You know, I know. You know what's crazy? And you know what's crazy about this whole thing is like I'm one of those people that I'm really cynical when it comes to like rumors and leaks. As a matter of fact, 
I have a whole segment of my show that whenever like rumors come out, we call it rumor control because like we try to we try to temper expectations and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. There has been a lot of rumor mill stuff, you know, in the world of PlayStation, PC, and Xbox, you know, because in all honesty, I feel like Sony and Microsoft are definitely holding close to all their shit, you know. Uh, they're not let not letting anything slip out. Listen, so you know, Corey, I need to know because I'm this close to buying a used Wii U just so I could have Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD don't because do. I feel like it's well, really you better buy Twilight Princess. That. You better buy Twilight Princess soon because that game is skyrocketed in price. Yeah, that game, that game yeah. will skyrocket. Don't, don't, don't do it. If anything, if anything, do Stephanie, it. because guess what? Uh, guess what? I just downloaded. I just downloaded the RetroArch emulation system. Oh, so okay. Can... Here we go. I'm gonna buy a three thousand dollar <laughs> PC to download retro games. You don't okay. need. You don't. You don't need a three thousand dollar PC for that. You know, <laughs> I could do it right now on my. I'm, I'm just making fun. Shit, oh my you gosh, these shit, PC gamers. You can, shit, you could do gosh. it on a fucking mobile device. Shit. I just want my Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD, and if it's never coming to Switch, I need it on something. It'll. And it'll. See, no, he, my. I have a new theory about that though. Oh no 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 no. Oh. No. 2024. No. no. Shut your 2024. 2024. No. Yep. One no. in the spring and one no. in the late no. summer. 24. Why not 2023? Because. Because uh, they Tears don't want, of the they Kingdom. Because they don't coming. want to. They don't want to take the wind out of sails of Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. By the way, old I Zelda won't take the wind out of that sail. I'm sorry. Matt, uh, uh, Matt so, Princess, someone Twilight has Princess kindly most... commented that you're you're one of the best guests here. Just throwing it out there. Twilight Princess Thank is, you. One of the, is one of the. Who most... said that? And why? <laughs> <laughs> what did <laughs> I do? Friend of show, Grayson Morales. Thank you. Twilight Princess is one of the most is one of the most requested Zelda remakes that people want right now for this current generation. Like, trust yeah, me, but, but, trust but, me, because but, when when the news came out about Skyward Sword, the immediate internet was like, "Why not Twilight Princess?" That mm-hmm. was that was the immediate reaction. It's because nobody right, likes but, Skyward Sword, and everybody who says they do is lying to themselves. Yeah. Well, like Skyward Skyward Sword, as someone who played it uh, when it came out, and I like blitzed through it because I knew I could just take it back. Uh, I didn't like it at the beginning, and I just I beat it for spite. And then when I took for it back, spite. like I've I've forgotten <laughs> I've forgotten like ninety eight percent of that game, and one of these days I may go back and I may go back. Who it, can say? It does. Know? It has a great story, but slogging through that story is terrible. Right, and yep. and see now with Twilight Princess, I think everybody who's requesting it now, and I know this is your favorite. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to start a fight with you, Corey. But I think everybody requesting it now just wants to tear it down when it comes out. Well, that's fair. Now, I, I sold my I Wii version I, of, of um, Skyward Sword. And that was the 25th anniversary edition. That's how much I didn't care for Skyward Sword. I really, yeah. I really don't. I really can't say that I'm one of those people to tear it down because, like, uh, in all honesty, like, I'm tr- I'm still kicking myself in the ass because, like, I should have bought the GameCube version. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Ed, the GameCube Ed, version. Ed keeps telling me he's going to send me the GameCube version. I keep telling him no. But yeah. secretly in my mind, I'm like, yes. Yes. I, said, yes. I, said about, I said about I said about the GameCube version because like I sure as hell did, did not have enough respect for it that I did not buy it for the Wii. Yeah. No. And then, no. And then, I and then, I and bought it for the, the HD Wii. Version come out in the Wii U. Yeah. I yeah, bought see, it. See, I did. Uh, the Wii U was a, was a console that I was not trying to buy, so um, I definitely wasn't going to get uh, uh, Twilight Princess on that. The Wii version was not great. That I turned around and bought the GameCube version and played it on my Wii. And plugged in a mm-hmm. GameCube controller <laughs> into my yeah. Wii. And you know what else? I don't know where my Twilight Princess Wii game is, so I'm extra depressed now. This is why I have this urgency, like, I need to get this Wii U. I have two copies of it if you want me to send you one. <laughs> Twilight Princess? Yeah, for uh, Wii. <laughs> See, now, I would probably revisit Twilight Princess before I'd revisit Skyward Sword. Um for the for the express purpose of maybe going back on all of the bullshit I gave Corey throughout Nerds Gone Rogue about Twilight Princess, mm-hmm. because 179 episodes worth of of yeah fight <laughs> yeah a lot, uh, but I, I but I still remember like I still remember when Twilight Princess was announced and I rem- I don't remember it might have been Electronic Gaming Monthly at the time, but they had they had. A, a picture of Link on a horse, 
And at the time, it looked to me like a John Ford Western. I'm like, oh, Zelda, Zelda's going huge now. Um, and while I do immediately remember being a little bit let down by that, I still enjoyed my time at the time. As I got further away, I, I started to throw shade at the game. Um, but don't worry, you weren't alone in that. No, I know. I, I'm not trying to say. I'm not trying to say I was special, but uh, I, I would like to know. I would like to go back and just maybe re- reassess because it's been. When did that game come out? Two thousand two thousand six. So it's been sixteen years. Like mm-hmm. I, I could probably stand to replay that, you know, and and see how it, and see how it goes. Here's 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 an honest honest review of Twilight Princess. Mm-hmm. It is my favorite. Sure. But there's is also... It, is it your favorite game of all time as well, or no? Uh, it it fluctuates. I like to say okay. Breath of the Wild kind of is kind of up there now, but... Sure. Uh, and also a lot of things go into Twilight Princess besides just the game itself. Me and yeah, my life like at the that time, time the, and stuff. The time where yeah. you played it, things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff. But, like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of filler... There's a lot of extra stuff that you don't need to do, but the game kind of wants you to do it. But it has the best dungeons of any 3D Zelda game. But there is a lot of filler in between those dungeons that I think people just get annoyed at. Well, yeah, I think the open, I mean, that the open world in that is not great. And it's not, I mean, technically it's not really that open because there's all these gates just pointing you towards where you need to go. But yeah. Yeah. So, and like you have to find specific, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a Zelda game. You got to find specific things to unlock specific pathways to get to new dungeons and stuff. Right. So sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know why people think it's annoying and like the, and Wolf Link isn't exactly the greatest character to control, but Minda's fun and the dungeons are the best. Yeah, yeah so of, I, of, of so all the things. Oh, go ahead, Laura. I'm sorry. Well, I was I was gonna say the the main reason why the main reason why I actually want those why I want those two games in particular to come out is because like I missed the Twilight Princess train altogether, and that's actually one of the ones that honestly one of the 3D ones I'm invested in. You know, as far as because like because like everybody knows like I, I I have like I don't really have like much respect for like the current incarnation of Zelda the way it is. I miss the top down Zelda games. Is why like the Link's Awakening is just been like uh been like me opening like lost treasure you know right now um but uh it's one of the ones that i that i that i kind of have an interest in and i want an investment in and uh and wind waker uh wind waker is just nostalgia because like i played and enjoyed the hell out of it on the gamecube and i i I, i'm ready to re-experience it i did not want to do it when it was on because they put it on 3ds as well as the um no it never came out on 3ds Oh, I thought that was I thought that was a, a handheld version of it. No, it's uh, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks are the three D or are the DS games, and then three okay. DS okay. got Ocarina and Majora. All right, thank you for thank thank you for keeping me straight on that one. That's why I'm here, Leron. You know. Yeah, I mean to keep I mean, you somebody, straight. Yes. <laughs> somebody somebody's got to attempt to do it. <laughs> oh. Man. Uh, but yeah, but that's 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 pretty much it for me. Like you know, like it's been it's been a good it's been a good week for my Switch. You know, um, last week, um, like but um, I'm getting ready to ramp things up because uh, I'll be I'll be continuing to play, play Monster Hunter because I believe next week is the um, the new content drop for Monster Hunter happens for Monster Hunter. Uh, I think it's the 29th, yeah. Okay, yeah. Which which, which saying all that. Like next week, I'll also be kicking off like my my horror video game marathon with Dead Space. Uh, I'll be playing the entire trilogy throughout the entire month of uh, of October. Um, and and the plan is um, either Andre or Stoy from um, from Crossroads is going to play co op with me for uh, for Dead Space Three. So if we Ooh. do this right, if we do this right, there'll be double content to see because uh, because I will. Because I will capture the content that's happening on John Carver's side in Dead Space Three, because like it's a, it's an adventure by itself, and um and uh and I think I'm, and Andre has Andre has been bugging me, so I think I'm gonna buy him a copy of Dead Space Three. <laughs> Why don't you just buy him the bundle? It's like four dollars all the time. What bundle? what bundle? I don't know. I'm sure they aren't there like. 
PC bundles where games are like 99 cents or like cheaper than donuts. You can just get yeah, but 47 you know games I've, for three I've, cents. I've, Here you go. But I've never seen Dead Space on one of those bundles, though. I don't know. I'm just assuming. You know what happens when you assume things, though. Um, so. Anyways, uh, yeah, Zelda Link's Awakening. That's a, that's a great video game. Uh, yeah. Before we move on, I remembered something. Oh, I remembered oh, something. Shit, I played Corey. to completion. You motherfucker, Corey. What? Like shit! I just found the Dead Space pack. Dead Space One, Two, and Three plus Dead Space Three Awakened for eighteen dollars. Mm. And I was about to. I was about to spend. It's I like to, he knew, Laurent. I, I was about to spend twenty dollars for one game for Andre, and now I can just spend twenty dollars and get him three and a half games. I like this. See. Merry Christmas, Andre. <laughs> He's Canadian. They don't celebrate Christmas. They, they, call, they call him Corey <laughs> the a, Deal Finder Deerage. <laughs> Corey the Deal Finder. <laughs> All right, Coupon that's what... Corey Deerage. That's what we call him around mm-hmm. here. <laughs> All right. That, um, that's it. That's it for me, though. Instead wow, of the red so coat, great. he wears lumberjack shirts. Huh. Uh, you mean flannel? Santa. I wonder. I should be able to gift this to someone. Flanta? <laughs> yeah, Flanta. <laughs> now, now here's my question: If I gift this to someone in Canada, are they going to charge me the upcharge for the uh, for the exchange rate? No, most likely. I don't know. I don't know how that works. No, because you're an American buying it, and it's a digital code. I doubt. I don't think that's how that works. I don't. I don't know how it works. We'll find I, out. I mean, all you got to do is go I, find. I don't, I don't know either. I don't you know either. But, but you have a monopoly but, board but, downstairs, right? You just shove that <laughs> paper money into the into the <laughs> floppy disk drive of your Canadian computer, and you know, just make sure you make sure you email Milton and Woo! copy Bradley on that. <laughs> oh my god! And you just instead of instead of one of those like rubber bands, you put the, put around money. You just you know. Stick it to some maple syrup, and then it sticks it together in the big slot. You need that. You need a Tim Hortons tray. Yeah. <laughs> although, right. um, although Matt, I think that's a misconception that Americans made up because when I said that to Andre, he didn't under, really understand the joke. So it's probably well. Where is Andre in Canada? Do we know? West Coast. Uh, yeah. West Coast. So it might just be regional. It might just be regional in Canada too. Maybe. Oh. It, I mean, but um, I did want to say I forgot a game I started and finished. Uh, it was on the Switch Online N64 thing. It's Sin and Punishment. How was it? It is a bonkers as hell rail shooter that kind of made me think that I, I've i missed. They're like rail shooters are probably like just a gaping hole in my play history. Like I've played Res, I've played Thumper, I've I have played rail shooters before, like House of the Dead, things like that. Um, but I don't. This is the first one outside of like Res and Thumper that has come close to that realm of being just what the hell. Um, whereas Res and Thumper are kind of experiences in their own in their own right like i know res and thumper are both vr titles but you don't need to you don't need to like res was originally i think a ps1 game um but this uh it's anime as hell in the first game because i know there's a second one uh i tried to pay attention to the story for about the first hour and then I realized I did not have enough breadcrumbs to get home. So uh, I just decided I'm going to just shoot where I'm supposed to shoot and just take everything in, let it wash over me. Um, a friend of mine from Gamers with Glasses, uh, Don, he uh, he was talking to me about it. He's like, apparently, he's like, the second game provides all the context you need to make the first game make sense. And I'm like, but why would you want to do that? Because there's so much in the first game that j- is just batshit. And it's batshit in the best possible way. Like, you just, it's just silly. Uh, and, but yeah, Sin and Punishment on the N64 uh, Switch Online is really fun. I, I recommend it. Hmm. Nice. 
You know what? Thanks for reminding me because I also did uh, more more switch more switch gameplay. Oh, I, I was playing Beyond Oasis on the uh, on the retro store. Ooh. Oh, nice. Yeah, like that's that's one of my favorite games from the Sega Genesis era. Like, it, and that was at the end of the Sega Genesis lifespan. Like, that was like one of the last games that came out for it. Mm-hmm. You know, if Sega ever made another console, their first party lineup would be pretty good mm-hmm. at this point if they had the right studios in place. In my opinion. See, no. Listen, I don't think just, I, I don't think you're wrong. I don't think you're wrong, but I also think they would be silly to do that. No, I'm just saying if they ever did, I'm not saying they're going to. Or you right, know, I think it would be dumb if they did too. But I'm saying if they did, yeah. Sonic, look at what IPs they own. Sonic. Forget, I mean, Persona. Keep Sonic to one side, but they have Persona and they have Yakuza. Yeah, and ever like, and Beyond Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> The trifecta. Ah! <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna take a nap on this soft microphone thing. <laughs> the Catherine sequel that nobody wants. <laughs> I'm sure somebody wants it, but for reasons other than uh... <laughs> you'll find that in the adult portion of Steam, <laughs> um... or the Switch eShop under <laughs> Family Games. <laughs> <laughs> Real story. Uh, anyways, I <laughs> I played some Destiny. Not gonna bore anybody with talk about Destiny. Uh, I went back and found the seashell that I was missing in Link's Awakening. Nice. <laughs> and guess what? Uh, I went through thirty-seven of the forty seashells before I found the one that I needed. So, um. Back up to speed. We're good. Also beat the seventh dungeon. And so I have just two more dungeons and then the final shebang. So Link's Awakening. Very, very adorable. Very good. I love it. I've put almost 20 hours into it, I think, at this point. Trying to 100% it. Um, So, which is why I was really upset when I was missing the seashell. It was very upsetting, especially because I was following a guide 100. percent I mean, I remember the I remember the great Korok hunt for you, Corey. Oh yeah, I did that too. Mm-hmm. Oh, is it the poop? Yep, I got my golden poo. Yeah. And the little tree man told me it, something smelled funny when I got it. So, you know, might have been me, but I did it. So, who's laughing now? Yep. I actually thought about going back and playing Breath of the Wild before the new one comes out, but then I thought, well, maybe I'll get burned out. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. Unless I played it, it, like, right a, now. If it was more of, like, a um, more linear, traditional Zelda game, I think I'd be able to stomach that a bit better, but to be able to tackle that open world all over again, I, I think it might have the opposite effect on me. Yeah, that's what I was worried about, and I don't want to do that. So, um... But I also played a little bit of the Cowabunga collection, uh, just played around with some of the games uh, in there. I got to tell you, man, most of those games, not very good. Not not very good. The Game Boy games, all bad, except for the third one. is actually a pretty interesting Metroid-y type game. Uh, the NES games, the first NES game, mm, nope, pass. Do not play. That game is hard. That game is bad. <laughs> Uh, the uh, other two NES games are like, they're tolerable, but you know, when you have the two arcade games on there, when you have Hyperstone Heist, which is the crown jewel of that collection, in my opinion, and, uh, Turtles in Time for Super Nintendo, what are you playing these NES games for? You know, uh, also all three tournament fighters games are total trash. I can say that now those developers are defunct. They don't have jobs anymore. Those games are bad. You know, you know, Corey. It's almost like it's almost like you're setting me up to start laughing at you because I because remember how I was like, man, are you sure you want to run after these games? I like four of the thirteen games on there, and three wow. of the rest of them are tolerable. <laughs> so, well, that's... Corey's also a teenage Mutant ninja turtles fan. Yeah. yeah, it's true. True. The only person I think that I mean... might be as big or bigger is Lamont. So, 
Uh, I would like his thoughts on it. Did he guy? Did he talk about it a lot? On he Fox? didn't talk about it. He um, no. He, he, what? Oh, sorry. We did a whole standard definition episode on the Cowabunga collection. That's coming out in like two or three weeks. So. Well, there, there you go. I won't spoil anything for you then. Well, but I don't think Lamont got that yet because I, I got him the Calabunga collection and Target took months to get it to him. Uh, that's because you got it from Target. Yeah, never again. That's what happens when you order from a dog with a spray painted Target on his face. <laughs> Damn. Mm. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's ridiculous. Hey, so. that is that is Spuds McKenzie's grandson, and you will respect him, okay? <laughs> You know, if if Bagel was the Target mascot, oh Bagel, oh Bagel, we would, uh, you know, we would get things I done. Bagel. Yeah. Uh, so I play, I played some of that. I still think Hyperstone Heist is the is the crown jewel of that package, and I know nobody played it because everybody was playing tournament or uh, tournament fires. Everybody was playing Turtles in Time either yeah. at the arcade or on their Super Nintendo and didn't have time to pl- play Sega Genesis games like I did. So, but Well, man. you grew up with the Genesis, I did. right? I did. Yeah, so I did. And uh, you know, I I maybe that has a little bit to do with it, but it has a whole bunch of extra levels. It has a boss rush mode in it. There's uh just a lot of great things in that Damn. game that I really love. You know uh, what? what? Hold on, hold on. Uh oh. I'm sorry. The Switch was the damn MVP in, in my house last week because, like, I even I even started playing Boss Rush mode of uh, uh Metroid Dread last week too. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, man, man. You know what? No, no, no. You're not coming out of your cradle this week. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. It's time to put the PS5 back to work. The Switch looks at Laurent and goes. You just wait. I'll come out of this cradle all I want. Gosh, it's like it's like Laurent's like I don't know. It's, I know it's like, it's like I'm a walk. It's like I'm a walking contradiction sometimes. It's fine. I, it's I like, I, of, like I, no, no, no. I like console. no. I, yeah, I do. Like that's the thing about it. You know, like you know, like in a much simpler world. You know, like I, I if if I lived in that world that you know there's such thing as a console war, then yeah, like there'd only be one freaking video game system in my house. You know. But, sh- but shoot, I'm the guy that I play everything. You know, as a matter of fact, I've got a boss rush banter in the work that I'm going to try and see if I can get launched on Tuesday of next week, uh, because uh, because Andre and Corey have been really trying to figure out like what my deal is about why I can't finish video games. So I've started, I've actually started putting the words together on paper and stuff. Now I'm trying to see if I can have it coincide with next week's episode. Mm-hmm. I got to talk to Lasby. <laughs> well. Just to just to, just to I don't know if this will throw a wrench in that, but you know you don't have to, right? What? Finish video games. Yeah, I don't. I've finished two the whole year. Like I mean, I've, I've only beaten one game this year. If I, if I if I do it right, I can beat uh, well one new game. I've only beaten one new game this year. Like if, if I do it right, I can finally say I can beat Link's Awakening this year too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I I think I've beaten almost twenty, but. Look, I there see are, there I, are plenty of games where that you I play. Find that time. I know, dude. I see people on our feed with like kids and like lives supposedly, and they're like, <laughs> "I've beaten fifty-two games this year," and I'm like, "How? There hasn't even it's been like, fifty-two weeks like, this year." It's like, bitch. What do you? But how? See, but see, now th- there, there, there are now. I think, on I'm not trying to speak for Stephanie while she's away, but I think we are all multi-dimensional people. We, we have lives, families that we keep in reports. Some people, specifically on Twitter, use playing video games as a personality trait. Like, that's, uh, that's who real. they are. For real, yes. And um, so, like, you know, I've beaten, I've beaten, like, almost 20 games. But that's also because I will play a game until it's not fun anymore. And if it's not fun anymore, I'm not playing. And if I don't beat it, oh, oh, well. Now, some of the games I have beaten are like Guilty Gear Strive, and that's just basically doing 12 fights. Like DNF Duel, that's like doing six fights. So, I mean, is it like is it like I'm beating Mass Effect every week? No. Um, it, I 
considered, you know, I I finished Monster Hunter Rise on PC again. Yeah, I also finished I Monster Hunter. I can technically I, say I beat that game this year. Yeah, like I finished I finished Sunbreak as well, but like is Sunbreak actually done? No, but there is a fight that you get credits after, so that counts as finishing the game. Yeah, you roll credits, yeah. In, in a lot of times, like like with Mixalumia that I was talking about earlier, I have like one more unlock, and then I've gotten I've unlocked everything. So I would say at that point I finish it. Well, see, my thing is my thing is now definitely I'll definitely go on into some detail on it uh, during uh, with my banter when I get it when I get it published. My sure. whole thing is my whole thing is I feel like I I've, I've made more career out of starting video games than I ever have of playing them and finishing finishing them. You know, and yeah. you know like some games you know like. A lot of the games that are in my library are games I have like vested interests in interest in playing, but it's more it's like what's what's stopping you know, or you know for example like you know like I'm a career Monster Hunter player like it's really easy to say okay I've I've had my fill of this game back to Monster Hunter. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hundred percent. Yep. Uh. I'm sorry, Corey. I, I, only no. meant to mention, I only meant to add that I was playing Beyond Oasis on a Switch. Like, I don't know. Like I said, it was a stellar week for my Nintendo Switch. That's 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 cool. I'm I'm glad. Uh, let's see. What else did I play? I, didn't, I don't think I played anything else. I think that was about it. I've been busy. Busy doing things and stuff. You know. So. Yeah. Um... Anybody have a topic they want to talk about? Anything? Anything they want to shoot from the hip? Pew pew. I have a, que- I have a question. Yeah. Huh? Crap! I just scratched myself. Um. So, you know, we've always had conversations on or about you know physical versus digital. Like that's a that's a topic that we you know everyone's talking about. Um. I tend to lean towards physical using the debate of, you know, if you use cloud gaming or subscription based and they shut it down and no longer support it, you lose the game. Physical, you always have it. But then I realize, do you, and, and this goes leads to my question, do you guys feel like eventually all consoles will be discless mm-hmm. um, or chipless? So I'm like, wait a minute, I might be having physical buying physical games for security but eventually it's kind of like the whole cd dvd thing like my lap- laptops no longer have places where you insert discs so it's like mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. that's why i wanted to ask because now i'm kind of like wait what am i going to do with all these physical games mm-hmm. that's why i stopped a while ago unless i mean i think i think nintendo for me nintendo is always the exception to the rule now where like I used to have a ton of physical video games and I'm like why? You know, like why yeah. do I have all these, you know? And like yeah, I know f- in terms of like preservation and all this other stuff, like physical games maybe, but like now you buy games on a disc and like half the game isn't even on the disc anymore, you know? Like <laughs> yeah. Like I remember Halo Infinite famously only only I think only the first two levels were on the disc. You know, that the whole open world section of Halo is not on the disc. You still have to download it. And uh, which, you know, Xbox is like, well, I don't have any physical games for Xbox PlayStation. Like, I might buy one or two of my favorite games just to have on the shelf, but I'm not going to amass a collection. Uh, But Nintendo has kind of always been the exception. And I actually started to do that with Switch for a while. Uh, when my daughter was born, I was like, "Oh man, I can't have these little cartridges lying around because she might eat them. She's gonna be she the, will eat them. Yeah, she, she's gonna be the one kid that thinks they taste good. Uh, <laughs> you know, because the Switch cartridges taste like you know you lick one and it's like Ugh. remember all those videos that came out right when the Switch came out and everybody was licking cartridges. What? Man, yeah, yep. dummies, dummies. Yeah, man. Remember when that was the dumb thing kids were doing instead of you know swallowing Tide Pods and cooking chicken in Nyquil. Um, but yeah, because, I mean, the physical games will only work as long as the device that's on it plays them. So I might be buying mm-hmm. Nintendo Switch physical copies, but I don't expect my Nintendo Switch to work forever. So once that breaks down and maybe like 10 iterations from now, the next Nintendo console doesn't have anything to 
Chips well, into. well, you know, you know the magic of this though. Like we we live in a day and age now where basically every everything can be repaired. Like you know, like and sometimes can be repaired with better shit. You know, like because I I've seen people who basically retrofitted their fucking NES and Super NES consoles and Nintendo sixty four consoles, and mm-hmm. they actually play better and are stronger than they were when they were current current consoles. Plus, we live in an era too where like you know. The console, you, you know, theoretically will play the games from the last generation. You know, like PlayStation right now, obviously, it's just PlayStation 4 games. But Xbox, you know, most of the games that you've purchased, you can pop in your Xbox currently or purchase digitally and they'll just play, right? And I'm assuming that that's how it's going to be moving forward with everybody. Like, whatever you purchase digitally now, right? And, you know, Nintendo owners are kind of going through this right now with the Wii U and the 3DS, but like, Nintendo says from here on out, all the games you purchase will be linked to your Nintendo account and will theoretically move forward. Is that is that because they plan on on just having source code out there? Well, I well I think it's because like I know like mm-hmm. uh, leaks leaks are leaks are showing that the the architecture of the next Nintendo console is basically going to be like a a a robust version of of the current gen. Um, so are we seeing so like. If we if we look at it like that, then that definitely means the source code is continuing for the switch for the switch hierarchy. You know, I mean that's that's, I mean look as long as like the digital games that I've purchased, I can play on future platforms. You know, that's that's the worry about Nintendo for me. I mean, it always has been and always, you know, f- will be until they prove prove me otherwise. Right? Like, uh, I just think that the i think i think xbox is doing it the best i think playstation is catching up but nintendo is the one that worries me about the digital stuff because you don't know because their digital infrastructure is garbage you know you know you know here's you know here's something i mentioned last night on crossroads um i mentioned that you know like you know like um because uh because andre is really happy right now about the state of nintendo switch online especially with the expansion pack mm-hmm. so am i um, i think that yeah. i think expansion pack is great like i like the modules that you download of just like okay i'm going to download the nintendo 64 and then the games are just there right you don't have to download mm-hmm. each game individually i like that mm-hmm. but like yeah what happens on the next system do you have to subscribe to nintendo that's Bumble what jumble that's, that's that's what I, that's what I was pack, you know that's like, what I was getting at because um because like I mean like I mean like the the, the switch is in its fifth year of life and stuff like that like oh yeah technically it's, yeah it's it's five year anniversary already yeah so the whole thing is like you know like like and 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 it, it is a vicious cycle you know because like every time a new Nintendo system comes up everybody's like where's my virtual console where's all and, you know like we spend all. I know for sure, like it, including the including the sixty dollars I spent for the for the Link to the Past when it was on Super NES, mm-hmm. including that including that I bought Link to the Past five additional times since this game has been released. You know, because I bought the Game Boy Advance version mm-hmm. that was forty dollars. That was forty dollars right there. I bought I bought and I bought three iterations of it on on their various like you know their their e shops or whatever you want to call it. You know, at well, five at five to ten dollars a shot. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I've. So like I keep spending the money, and you know like I'm I can only be mad at myself because you know Nintendo Nintendo knows they laid the golden goose with, with, with their with their with their library, mm-hmm. you know. And that's I mean that's like that's the only reason why I subscribe to Nintendo Switch Online is their virtual is their virtual console expansion pack library. It's not it's not like I'm sitting there playing games online. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah. worth it. You know, I mean like yeah, Splatoon is probably the best example of something that worked. And even then, like Grayson was on last night on pow block when we recorded and he said that like you know he still gets dropped from matches and good luck playing smash brothers online it's like a slideshow you know yeah it's like i didn't i didn't pay for this photo mode yeah so i mean it's i i don't know you know like and and you know like i'm not so much mad at nintendo i'm more mad at myself than i am at nintendo for this stuff you know because like i bought super metroid a few times you know a few additional times since it's super nes release you know um there there are some games you know like I, and I i guarantee you like i'd be spending real money if they put the game boy advance stuff on 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 switch on, on nintendo switch online you know i well you know i'd be spending money in a subscription you know so you know 
at least that's the cool thing now, you know, is like you only pay like a yearly fee for it and you have access to it, you know, versus versus buying it every time. You know, I guess I guess Nintendo kind of learned something from the consumers on that because people were getting a little bent out of shape about that shit, mm-hmm. especially, you know, with the virtual console. I think the virtual console is as in his heyday with the Wii and the Wii U. I really think so. You know, because I, I I bought a ton of shit on on Virtual Console on the Wii on the on the Wii. Yeah, so did I. I did too, and yeah. I didn't buy as much on the Wii U just because you could play the Wii stuff on the Wii U. Uh, I mean, you could upgrade it for like save states and whatever, but like I wasn't gonna do all that. Uh, but I mean, I think <laughs> I think the way they have it set up now is is great. I just wish it was like. It's, it's the naming convention too is like it's called nintendo switch online why isn't it just called nintendo online yeah and that way you cover all your bases mm-hmm. and then maybe we wouldn't be having these questions or maybe we would but we'd be talking about it differently it's like the next con- the next system that comes out is is the eShop just going to close and you can't download any of these games anymore i know so, i know it, it, it's it's like it's it's like it feels like we're living the, we're living the definition of insanity. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I feel like I'm chasing this circle. I'm like physical, digital, physical, digital. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not even trying to like be cool and do the cool thing. I just want to be able to pick whichever ones where I can be able to play it whenever I want to because I own it. And I don't know. There's now now the circle back on 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 your question though. Like uh, like thanks to Corey, like I've I've embraced more of a digital a digital model because I used to be one of those people where it was like, you know what, no, I got to buy the physical stuff. And the reason, and part of it was because like, you know, like for example, when we look at Scott Pilgrim versus the world, right? The game, um, that game got pulled from stores because of licensing issues and stuff like that. And, you know, I bought that game on PS3 and the fact that I can't play, well, I mean, I, you know, well, well, I still have my PS3. So if I hook my PS3 up, you know, like I, I cannot re-download it on my system, you know, um, you know, and PS3 games are not backwards compatible with PS4 and PS3, PS5. So, you know, so like that. So I was kind of asked out on that, you know, thank God, like Scott Pilgrim versus the world, the game, you know, came out, came out on PlayStation plus this week, you know? So like, you know, now it's like, I don't have to wring my hands anymore about do I want to spend this money for either the either the limited run game for forty dollars or spend the fifteen dollars for the for the for the store version of the game. You know, I don't mm-hmm. have to worry about that now. You know, stuff like that. But there's but that's another thing that that's also that was also worrisome about me. Like when I more when I be, started embracing more with uh with digital games. You know, it's like digital games are are about are not as forever as physical games are. You know, like. Hell, Babylon's Five is being is is, is becoming the new e- is the modern day ET game right now. Like like Babylon's GameStop, Fall. Yeah, yeah, Babylon's Fall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, because yeah, GameStop is literally giving the game away for free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like the game, like it's been a long time. Like I, wow, like I can't remember the last time I've seen a game penny out at GameStop. Yeah. I, 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 wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Also, yeah, you know, so so it's you know it's, it's, one, it's one of those scary things you know like like we're Matt, Matt and I we're playing Monster Hunter one of these days the servers are gonna go down and what the hell yeah. are we gonna do? <laughs> I mean, say with me for Destiny, it's like, I mean, someday Destiny is not gonna exist, and it's like, well, you know, I mean, I have it's stuff to remember time. the game by right like fifty years from now when I'm you know dying in a hospital somewhere maybe. Uh, <laughs> You know, like I have like art books and the in the grim in the grimoire books and the statues and the ghosts and everything, but like, what if I just want to go run around? You Riley, know? Like... bring me my destiny memorabilia. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real. I mean, for real. Like, I have, I have, I have discs of the Monster Hunter games, and you know, I have no way of playing those old, those old games now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there are certain features of the original or the or the first two Monster Hunter games that are that are locked behind online and the servers are down, so you never see that stuff again unless you just build your own server. Yeah, which people are starting to do for PS3 yeah. games. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. With the physical versus digital thing, I'm going to th- th- my metric for it is like I, I I almost always default to digital now, but when games come out and make like a severe impression on me uh like specifically like look i've got persona 5 royal there i've got like the souls games here i've got my outer wilds 
you know, uh, limited run game. Outer Wilds, when I played it in 20, it was, I think it's 2019, like that became my favorite game of all time immediately. And like, so with that, I will, I will do, I will, I would do a physical one. There are games that I'm playing now that like, I kind of wish I would have gotten the Cult of Lamb physical edition because that, that Lamb plushie, adorable as hell. Um, I may actually, and like I've picked up Rise and Sunbreak digitally, but because like this is going to be the, this, these are going to be the two installments of Monster Hunter that sort of make me a fan for life, I might just pick them up physically for when the servers go down so I can come back and say like, look, I could just use a wire bug and have and have a ball for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's it's funny. It's funny the uh, the last including Rise, including Rise and Sunbreak, World and Iceborne, like 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 ev- like I I don't have a physical copy of Monster Hunter games before, you know, since Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate for 3DS. Okay. I mean, yeah, I did it, pick up I I did pick up GU just because it's available physically, but like I can honestly say since I'm only since I'm only using that one like to dip my toe into old Monster Hunter, I would probably end up you know I, I pick up Switch Switch games physically if I can, uh, just specifically to do the the GameStop credit thing. Like I'm not even gonna I don't make a ton of money and what money I do have, I kind of have to save. So wherever I can get, wherever I can save a few bucks, I will, I will use those. Mm-hmm. Well, I won't try and pirate stuff just because I'm not an asshole, but, um, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've pretty much defaulted to, uh, digital everywhere. Even, even switch. I've actually defaulted to digital and unless it's like something that I know, like I just kind of want in like a curated collection, you know, like like Zelda, for example, mm-hmm. or like 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 look at how glorious this is. Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter, <laughs> <laughs> three ultimate Monster Hunter Generations, four ultimate. Hold on, but this wait, guy. there's, there's but more. wait, there's more. <laughs> of course, there is. Now y'all gonna be like, oh, this guy is crazy now. <laughs> nope. Now. I was gonna say now. Ah, let's see. Uh, now this is Monster Hunter Portable. I imported this because like it took a year and a half for it to come to PSP in the United States. Oh, I thought you were gonna say it took a year and a half to get to you because you imported it. <laughs> no. No. Uh, shoot. There's uh, there's Monster Hunter Freedom too. Um, Monster Monster Hunter Freedom Unite somewhere around here. Doesn't seem to be in this box though, but yeah, like I mean, like shit. Yeah, uh, the original, the original Monster Hunter stories for for three uh, DS. Nice. Yeah, I, I feel like I do need to go back and at least buy like if I can't buy the physical uh, copies of Monster Hunter Four and Rise, I mean Monster Hunter World and Rise, I need to at least go buy the boxes. <laughs> I mean, you could probably buy it physically somewhere, right? Oh, yeah, you remember, could probably, you, uh, you could remember that game? No. Yeah. What is that? Oh, Metroid yeah. Samus Returns? I do. Oh, hey, hey Corey, here's that, ga- here's that game I volunteered to give you last week. I know. I mean, if you don't want it, I'll take it, but that game's worth a lot of money. I feel like you could do something better with that than just hand it to me. Oh, wow. This is Zelda: Link Between Two Worlds. Never finished that game. A Link Between Worlds. Yep. Oh, that was I like that one. I, that yeah. one, I think it's a very underestimated uh, title. Gamespot didn't gave it their game of the year that year. Oh okay. I mean, maybe I don't know. I just three. I mean, I agree with you though. I think 3DS games are were often overlooked because they were handheld games. Yeah. Uh Okay. Well, that's that's kind of what I want to talk about. I just was thinking about it. I don't know why, but I bought a, a couple of games physically, and then I realized, you know, with people seeking out the disc list, PlayStation, and now Xbox just in general is mm-hmm. moving away from disc. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I actually play my Xbox Series S way more than I play my Series X uh 
just, I mean, it's just because it's convenient. It's in my office, but, uh, I don't know if I would have maybe done it over again. I probably would have, you know, probably had one Xbox. That was probably not a great decision, but. Also, at the time, I was running an Xbox podcast and should probably have done the research. So. <laughs> uh, rip Arsenal X. Still on hiatus, guys. <laughs> I'll come back someday. <laughs> Maybe. Um, yeah, I, I'm. that is a struggle for me, though, too, because I'm like, there's something cool about having a bunch of boxes lined up on your shelf and like looking at them and being like, oh, man, that looks so cool. Yeah. yeah, I I I agree with that, but there's also part of me, you know, it's also like, man, it's like, when I have to move, it's like all this shit I have to lug around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I already have enough records to move if we ever move, and that like it takes me a week to pack up all my records. Yeah, and those will break That's, too. You gotta be yeah, careful with those. Yeah, 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 very fragile. So like, I don't need, and, and, and like I'm I'm in the process of getting. Uh, a network attached storage system for my movies and CDs because I have thousands of them and I need to, I need to, I need to not, mm -hmm. they, they, they need to go away. Yeah. I'm looking at the stack of movies I have and I'm like, I will keep, I'll keep Indiana Jones. I'll keep Ninja Turtles. I will keep Jurassic park, stuff like that. But like, there's random movies on my shelf. Like I look at, I'm like, when did I even get that? Like, why do I even have this? You know, like, like why? Sharknado seemed like a good time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Although I will, All my DVDs. <laughs> I will always keep uh, horrible bosses though, because it's the, <gasps> it's the first movie that my wife and I saw as a couple. That's a great movie. And it just that all, was a good movie. It is, but I don't know. Like, theoretically, I don't know if that's a movie worth keeping on Blu-ray or DVD or whatever. But like, <laughs> the Ultra 4K horrible bosses. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Kevin Spacey turned out to be a real horrible boss. Am I right? Uh, oh. mm. Ah man, too soon? Not no, soon yeah. enough? Nope. <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, like, I have a bunch of dumb movies like that. That's just like, why do I own this? Mm, I don't know. Although, again, I was looking at the Best Buy steelbooks of the first three Indiana Jones movies because they were all only fourteen dollars, and I was okay. like, I don't need another copy of The Last Crusade. But I, but you want it. I want an ultra 4K Blu-ray in a steel book because yeah. who doesn't need a steel book with Harrison Ford and Sean Connery's face on the front? That's true. That's true. You know, like I would probably, I would pro if, if if I were feeling nasty one day, I would probably get that in Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Good times. Good times. Yeah, hmm. I think so. I wrote it in my diary so I wouldn't have to remember. <laughs> <laughs> you did not give it to Marcus. <laughs> Why did you give it to Marcus? Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> you said he could blend in. I was lying. <laughs> we must go to Berlin. That's such a good impression. Uh, right? Uh, uh, good times. We named the dog Indiana. <laughs> Junior? <laughs> I love that dog. <laughs> oh. Oh. I just like Sala just laughing at him. Yeah. That's oh. so funny. Remember when they're trapped in the tank? Oh, yes. And <laughs> yeah, they're just like sitting there just watching chaos happen. <laughs> And Sean Connery just gets his umbrella. <laughs> oh. Oh. God, that's the best one of those movies. Sean, like we've been hit. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Have we been hit? Yeah, they got us. <laughs> they got us. 
Uh, okay, we're delirious. Yeah, we okay. Well, <laughs> it's fine. Good times. Yes. All right. Well, I think we're going to end it there. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening to the Boss Rush Podcast. Remember, you can find new episodes every Monday on your podcast service of choice. You can watch us live on Wednesday nights on twitch.tv slash Boss Rush Network. Uh, you can get the show, the audio version, a week early on Patreon, patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. And uh, leave us a nice rating and review. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Matt, thank you for joining us tonight. Happy to be here. Appreciate you. Uh, where can we find you? You can find me at infinite underscore rewind on every platform I choose to be on under that name. Uh, if you are interacting with someone under that name and it's not me, uh, I, I don't apologize. Just stop talking. To them. <laughs> um, uh, you can also find me hosting other podcasts. Uh, I'm a co-host of a music podcast called Trivial Merit, where my friend Caroline and I make playlists of an artist or a band to get us from a negative mood to a positive one. We just recently released our Green Day episode. We are about to release an Open Mike Eagle episode, and we are about to record a Run the Jewels episode. So, Dookie, uh, that's a that's an album. Yes, and it's yes. We talk about Dookie a lot on the green day episode <laughs> also fun fact the wikipedia article for green day uh leads with not to be confused with greenery day hmm. greenery which is a japan which is a japanese holiday and uh th that made both of us giggle a little bit um and just a, a tangent promotion uh my co-host caroline she writes for unwinnable and she just finished up a five installment column about the game paradise killer you should read her writing it's wonderful she's very smart she also writes for popular mechanics and uh she's hilarious so check her out there um i do also co-host a movie podcast called free reeling it with my buddy jesse he and i watch a movie every two weeks talk about it we also talk about what we're watching um we just recently watched the first superman movie that should be coming out next week i believe um and then we we are going to start uh our spooky season movies um i'm not gonna say what they are because i've actually forgot the order of guests that we're having so uh I'm just, I'm just going to get myself in trouble by admitting that i forgot um and I have also been invited to Scanline Media's Bald Gun Guy podcast, which is about the Hitman series of games, or at least the modern trilogy. We just released the Isle of Segale, which is the final uh, proper level in Hitman 2. Um, and that is a, that's a level. And I, I like it a lot. And we go into all of its weird wackiness <laughs> that it throws at you, apart from being just a layer cake of weird coding uh, as, as and an Illuminati open house for survival. Uh, Hitman Two rules. Um, and yeah, that's that's all I do. I did host. I I am part of a video game podcast, but that is on hiatus. Uh, we have all stated to each other that we will be back. We just don't know when that's going to be. We're all sort of going through stuff and life is getting in the way. And once we can all find some balance, we'll be back. Nice. Meantime, I'll just enter my podcast slut era and just be on podcasts. That's fine. We have a bunch. <laughs> you need to make the rounds. So, you know, <laughs> I just told you where to find me. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I know where to find you. Oh, I know you know. Ah, uh, why are y'all? Why are y'all sounding dirty right now? I, I need an adult. Don't worry about it, Haran. <laughs> you like it, uh, Stephanie? Where can we find you? <laughs> People can find me on the internets, Twitter and Instagram at Klimov underscore author. Um, episodes of After Dark. Uh, the standard Def Disney episodes are going to be on a hiatus, uh, just short term. Uh, but you can also find my articles on bossrush.net. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Congratulations to Mark, by the way, on having his baby. Um, very excited oh, for him. That's why That's why some of our standard def stuff is going to be on hiatus. But we're filling, we're filling those holes with other things. 
Gotta fill them holes. Yeah, all of them. Just plug it you in. Guys could, you guys couldn't even wait for Draft of Dark nope. to start this. Leron, where can we plug your hole? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have many holes that can be that can be plugged. Let so, me uh... tell you where you can start. <laughs> So you can start. You can start with uh, with uh, Twitter and Instagram. You can you can head on over to YouTube and Twitch, or you can round it all off and go over to find me on PlayStation Network and uh, and Steam by just looking up Exodus eight zero three. And yeah, like I'm, don't forget about the Crossroads podcast every Tuesday night at eight p.m. on my uh, on my t- YouTube channel. Slam that bell, fill that hole. Oh. <laughs> you can find me at I am Corey and HC on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on a plethora of other things here on the Boss Rush Network, including Nintendo Power Block, Standard Def, and other things. Uh, I think that's it. I am holy in HD. Oh God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for watching and or listening. Until next time, we love you. Bye. Bye. Have a good See ya. One.